you step over here? Excuse me, fellas. Now, you are the acting father for the Evans baby. I ain't acting for no, no, no baby. Let him watch TV like all the rest of the kids. Since the real father is missing, I have to give you a lesson in how to change the baby. Into what? Observe. Pick up the diaper. Stretch it. Pick the child up. Set her in the center. A little powder. Pull through. Turn this down. Now, pick up the tape and press. And pick up the tape on this side and press. Now, you try it. All right. Jump up on the table. Thanks, Achoo. Yeah. Hey, the place looks nice. Yeah, this ain't bad for three days' work, huh? <laughs> wow, Hutch, you're the best-looking doorman I ever seen, man. Yeah, well, after Fred put that big ad in the paper, I wanted to look the best. Where's the head man? Tell the truth. My maitre d'. Yes, sir. Yeah, Fred, you look great. And if the restaurant don't work out, we can always follow you when we go to invade El Segundo. <laughs> yeah, if you don't shut up, I'm going to cut off some of your El Rotundo. <laughs> Get over there and line up. Line up? Line up over there. I got to inspect you guys so I can see you be sharp. When the guests get here, our Jew, stick out that chest. Bubba, pull in that stomach. I just did. And you, Hutch, you just parked the car. Now, any questions? Just one. What? I don't know how to drive. <laughs> don't drive, just park them. Hey, Mr. Sanford, hey, listen, I'm gonna go check things in the kitchen. Go ahead. Hey, Bubba. Yeah. I remember this is a fancy restaurant. You gotta greet the customer with style and class. Got you, Fred. Good. <laughs> Greetings, old stylish and classy eating persons. I am Bubba, your humid servant. Humble, humble. Good evening, Mr. Sanford. We enjoyed your food so much, we came back and brought our friends. Oh, that's so delightful to hear you say that, my two favorite customers. There's always a place for you here. Thank you, Mr. Sanford. Uh, do you have reservations? No, we don't. And you ain't got no car either. Shut up, Bubba. Come on in, come on in, folks. Rush right in. This is a little disturbance in the neighborhood. Hey, Fred! Come here. What are you screaming for? I just want to tell you something. I Man. told you class. Yeah, but look, we're short one set of chopsticks. There ain't nothing to scream about, Bubba. Class, show a little class here the chopsticks. <laughs> and listen, serve the food over the left shoulder. All right, Fred. <laughs> we 
this is General Lee. I bought all this stuff from Daniel uh, Perkins, who retired. And I am here to make you a beautiful business proposition. What's the proposition? Come on, I'll show it to you. All right. Now, I have got a wagon load of junk here. You're in the junk business. I've got junk. So, let's make a deal. <laughs> okay, if the price is right. Ah. I'm asking 200. I'm answering 50. <laughs> All right, for you, I'll go down a little lower, 100. Well, for you, I'll come up a little higher. 50. <laughs> That's as high as I'm gonna get. All right, I'll take it. $50, but that's only for the junk. Not General Lee here. Now for a hundred dollars, you couldn't buy this horse. Oh, but I won't get a horse anyway. I don't need no horse. Uh, let me ask you a question. What? Why not the horse? Why aren't I selling the horse, Fred? Would you sell Lamont? How much? <laughs> No, no, I, I, I can't sell this horse. This is a living, breathing thing. It's got a heart, it's got a lung, it's got a liver, it's got a strong back, and all that stuff. <laughs> I'll throw in $10 extra for this living, breathing, stinking horse. <laughs> Are you kidding? $10 for a thoroughbred or a, a pet? Thorough I, pet? I, I heard that. You said thoroughbred. That's what you said. He's a thoroughbred. Well, uh, so what if I did? How did Perkins get a thoroughbred? He stole him. Stole him? That makes you a horse thief. No, it don't. He stole him. I bought him. Well, it makes you a horse thief once removed. <laughs> and once removed, a horse thief gets from 10 to 20. Yeah, uh... I don't know why anybody want to buy a horse like this anyway. I mean, what are you going to do with a thoroughbred racing horse if you can't race anymore? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'll give you 20 for him. 20 dollars? Yeah. For the senior citizen secretariat? <laughs> 20 for the horse, 50 for the wagon, take it or leave it or lump it. Well. Going once. Well. Going twice. Well. That's your last trip to the well, Captain. <laughs> well, I'll take it. Well, I'll go get it. <laughs> what did I tell you, General Lee? You can fool some of the people some of the time, but Fred Sanford always... <laughs> Fools rush in. <laughs> Where wise men never go. I'm gonna buy a thoroughbred. <laughs> And make a lot of dough. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, da. Ah, so funny. He's so dumb and so smart at the same time. <laughs> well, goodbye, General Lee. Here you go. <laughs> 70 bucks. Thank you. Take good care of yourself, General Lee. Red. Please take care of him. Okay. And here's his papers. Right. And his hat. Good. You got a real. You got a real bargain there, Fred. <laughs> Calvin. Goodbye, Grady. Oh, oh. Uh, hello, Rollo. How's my good friend Rollo? Uh, uh, hello, hello, ladies. Uh, who's this? Uh, this is Fred Sanford, the mom's father of Sanford's son. Oh, what you got in the pot, pot? <laughs> oh, it's just some stew that I fixed, and I was sitting home alone, and I thought I'd bring it over. Uh, Y'all didn't eat that, did you? Uh, oh. no. Uh, all we had was peanuts and potato chips. Oh, that ain't no good food. That's the kind of stuff you take to the zoo to feed animals. <laughs> Look here. Smell this. Good. It's a good feeling to know somebody's enjoying your cooking while you're at home all alone, lonesome, and by yourself. 
Well, wait now. You can't just leave all this here and go home alone and sit. Yes, he can, girls. You love doing that, don't you, Pop? Well, good night, Pop. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look here. Wait a minute. Let me serve it, and then I I'll leave in a little bit. Uh, I'll just serve it to you. Y'all got anything to drink? No, all we had was some French furniture polish. Baruse your leg of salt. Hey, look here. Reach inside my coat here. Reach right in there. How's that? Oh, oh, Ripples! Oh, this is what we was asking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Ripples. Thanks, Pop. Thanks. Well, I just leave this here, and you folk, you young folks, enjoy yourself. Yeah, you do that. Well, good night, Pop. Yeah, good night, Pops, and thanks for the food. Yeah. Oh, Yep. Can't you just stay a bit? Well, what would I do here with you young people? Well, we were just about to dance. <laughs> Couldn't you stay and have a little dance? You, you young girls wouldn't be interested in my kind of dancing and old stuff like uh, 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 the boogie woogie and, and the applejack and <laughs> trucking. Uh-huh. Come on, show up. Yeah, give us yeah. a demonstration. No, you don't want to do that. Good night, Pop. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me go. <laughs> These girls want me to show them? I gotta show them. That's right. See, first I'll show you the boogie woogie. See? Do, do, do. Oh, Pop, go! Get down! Oh, yeah! Wait, 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 wait. Is yeah. this how it goes? Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, hey! Let me try Ooh, that! Yeah, yeah. yeah do the boogie woogie. Oh, mm. Truck. Too you cute. Hey, man, he's doing it to us again, ain't he? Sure is. Yeah. Damn if I know, but all the dogs in the neighborhood are just tickled to death. <laughs> hey, Pop, would you come down here? Como <laughs> ah. I thought I told you when I left here this morning that I wanted you to get this thing out of here. Listen, I'm going to try and forget that you call this a thing. And I'm going to try and forget that you look like the fruit section of the supermarket. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on and suck me. See if I care. Great artists all down through the ages have always been insulted. So if you want to call it a thing, go and call it a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> if you want to call it junk, call it junk. It's junk. <laughs> if you want to call it ugly, call it ugly. It's ugly. If you want to call it, call the hospital and get a room ready. Now is your time. I'm tired of talking. Well, see, see you, Lamont. And goodbye, nameless. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm getting on back to work. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, we got over $200 worth of inventory out there in the truck, Pop, and I can't even bring it in here because of this tower. Tower. That's right. They got the watchtower and the Eiffel Tower, and now the Fred G. Sanford Memorial Tower and private park and historic landmark and forest. <laughs> You're really serious about this, aren't you? That's right. Well, I'm going to level with you, Pop. In my opinion, you've created a shapeless, formless, meaningless piece of nothing. Son, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> I'm expressing my true feelings about your tower. And I'm expressing my true feelings. I know that, Papa. But see... look, son, this is more than a tower. It's part of my life. Everything here means something in my life. Look at it. I mean, just look around. Pick out something. This has something to do with my life. All right. A water pistol with a flower sticking out of it. What is that? That means something to my life. That reminds me of the first job I had in Los Angeles. A water pistol with a flower sticking out of it? Well, you were too young to remember when I was a night watchman at the Carnation Milk Company. <laughs> Look, Pop, I, I realize that you're serious about this project, man, but you're gonna have to tear it down. The clearance sale is only two days away. Tear this down? I'd rather, I'd rather spend three nights and two days in Las Vegas with your Aunt Esther <laughs> in, a, in, in a cheap room with the door locked. Look, from the outside. I realize you're serious about it, but this is a, this is an ugly mess that you made here, man. And you don't know nothing about judging art. You know there's one in kindergarten that flunked clay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call the museum and I'm gonna ask Sandra to fall by here and we'll let her decide if this is art or not. Is that fair enough? That's fair enough, that's fair. 
Now, listen, now you get out of my way because you're standing in the light. What light? It's 7 o'clock at night. Sure is. Well, get out of the way, you're standing in my dark. 